Hello, I'm Carl Erickson, and we, you know, I've just finished uh, uh, summer season of geology field trips for the NHSN. Uh, that have gone down really well, been really well attended. Uh, and quite a few people on these trips have expressed uh, very little knowledge of geology as a subject. Um, and so I thought it might be a good idea to run a short course on geology for beginners, a uh, very low level uh, course, just to introduce some terms and uh, introduce people to uh, various different processes going on in geology so that they might understand a bit better what we see when we're out in the field in the future. It'd be helpful for anybody, but particularly for uh, people with no uh, sort of prior knowledge of geology. Okay, so the course is beginning uh, a week on Friday, the 14th of October. It's going to be eight sessions long. Six indoor sessions or Zoom sessions, rather, uh, two hours, uh, my normal slot from 10 to 12. And there'll be two full day field trips from 10 to 3 uh, towards the end of the course. So, this is the full lineup of dates uh, two weeks of Zoom and then a break of a half term, back for another Zoom session, followed by the first field trip, back to Zoom again and then another field trip, and then finally two further indoor Zoom sessions. Okay. So we're going to start with the very beginning of things, uh, uh, the Big Bang, only 14 billion years ago. Um, matter was effectively created and somehow ended up forming into stars and solar systems, including ours. Um, so we'll look at how the planets formed, including Earth, and also Earth in its orbit around our Sun. The uh, orbit varies over time, and that has a particularly marked effect on some of the geological processes on the Earth, which are particularly important in our region. So we'll go through through that uh, sequence of cycles known as the Milankovitch cycles. Then we'll concentrate more on the structure of the Earth itself, uh, how we know what its internal structure is like, since we can't drill down to it, what evidence have we got for what's actually there. The only bit we can really see is the, is the crust. Um, and so we'll look at that. Uh, and then the crust in particular, uh, it moves around. It's not fixed in position. It uh, floats around, plate tectonics. Uh, each of these continental masses is, is on uh, is on a uh, plate, uh, and these move around slowly, um, coming together and breaking up again, creating mountain chains and ocean basins and things like that. So we should look at uh, uh, what's happened with plate tectonics through Earth's history and what is the driving force behind plate tectonics, heat in the mantle. Um, and that creates new continent uh, crust mid-ocean ridges um, and these the oceanic crust is then destroyed in subduction zones but uh, those areas we create continental crust so we we'll look at those two different types of crustal materials um, the processes involved uh, and those processes are uh, particularly important in in the rock cycle um, so it's rather complicated colourful diagram shows you pretty much everything you need to know about geology um, but uh, we don't need to go into quite as much detail as we have in here but we'll cover an awful lot of things so we'll just get, uh, get a, an inkling of that in week one. Week two we'll go back to that rock cycle again and look at the different types of rocks, the classification of rocks and on a broad level we've got igneous metamorphic and sedimentary rocks but we shall also look more closely at the uh, classification of those uh, three different types of rocks that the, the break down into to more detailed analysis of those. Um, quite a few familiar terms there, also probably a few that people may not be quite so familiar with, but we'll discuss all of those. And where the various different rock types form and what particular rocks we uh, include in those categories. So the igneous rocks, and the sedimentary rocks, how they form, uh, different types of sedimentary rocks we have, uh, and 
as the igneous and sedimentary rocks if they're buried at depth or subject to high pressures. The rocks and the, the minerals in those rocks can change and they get uh, what we call, call metamorphic rocks. So that's a good thing as well. Movement of the plates in the Earth's crust kind of stretches and compresses, and, um, sometimes causing folding, but sometimes causing faulting. So we look at various different types of folds and faults and processes behind those. Okay. Also, those processes can lead to tilting of the rocks and uh, the, the tilting of rock layers we call the dip. So we look at the dips and strikes of various different rocks and things and what that tells us. Okay. Following week, we'll look more closely at what actually goes on to making up the rocks. So we'll start off by looking at the commonest minerals in, in, that we find in rocks. And, uh, there's a huge number of minerals found in rocks, but we'll concentrate on the, the, the most common ones, ones that we may well find in samples we will find out in the field. So we'll look at those, including the chemical composition of them, the colours of them, the structures of them, and then which particular rock types we're likely to find them in. And we'll look at how those minerals are formed, uh, the sequence uh, of mineral formation within igneous rocks. It's not just totally random, there's a direction to it, so we shall uh, look at that. Um, likewise, uh, the, the final uh, composition of those igneous rocks, that's different proportions of uh, the various different minerals in, and we'll look at how that comes about and how that enables us to, to divide the igneous rocks into various different groups. Sedimentary rocks, usually sandstones and limestones, but there are other things like evaporites in there as well. We'll look at the various different uh, types of sandstones and the classifications of those, as well as the limestones and the other sedimentary rocks as well. Okay. And again, finally, metamorphic rocks. So about pressure and temperature. Uh, the effects of pressure and temperature on rocks uh, uh, changes the mineral structure and changes some of the minerals in there. Um, and forms a whole range of different metamorphic rocks. So we'll look at those as well. First field trip, we'll go out to the northeast coast up to Boomer, a nice little section of coast there. Um, and we see an awful lot of sedimentary rocks, uh, lots of sandstones, with lovely interesting patterns in there, and some quite coarse ones with very big pebbles in the top right picture there. But there's also uh, uh, some igneous rocks there. Bottom left is a, a really big igneous dike, a wind, a wind dike um, on the shore. And further along from there, there's also faulting evident in the coast and the shore. So we'll, we'll look at all of that at Boomer. Uh, back indoors again, back online, we will look at uh, geological time and the periods and, and uh, explain what was going on in the earth during these various different periods uh, and how, why they're divided up, how they're divided up, basically. Um, do that sort of on a global scale and an Earth history scale, but also on a, a UK level as well. This is a section by William Smith, of the strata between Snowden and the Thames, and good indication of the various different rock types uh, that we find the different periods in the UK. Back in the field again the following week, getting towards the end of November. Weather won't be particularly good, probably, so we'll uh, stick to a relatively sheltered place and we'll pay a visit to Chesman Dean, where we'll see, you know, rather than um, like at Boomer, we see a change in rocks as we go along a section on the shore here. We can see a change in rocks going up through the section here um, in parts of Chesman Dean. And some other bits of evidence, like the lower right-hand corner, there's uh, a thing called the dike stone, which uh, marks where the coal miners came across a, a major fault, the 90 fathom fault. Um, and so significant was it that they, they left a, a couple of marker stones for it. So we'll have a look at all of that sort of stuff. Back indoors again, and um, we'll have a whole session devoted to fossils, uh, fossilization processes, various different types of fossils we can get from body fossils to trace fossils and things like that. Um, and also what they show us about the geological uh, history, mass extinction events, the cause of them. Uh, so we'll have a whole session devoted to that. And then finally, we'll finish up with uh, a closer look at the geology of the Northeast 
in England uh, through time, looking at which geological periods are represented here. Um, talk about various different localities, uh, the processes that were going on and where Britain was uh, on the planet during those early time periods. So all at a very low uh, level, so no sort of prior knowledge of the subject really required, um, but it will give you enough information so that you can understand and hopefully identify some structures and minerals and rock types that we see when we go out on uh, field trips uh, next year. And, uh, hopefully I shall see quite a few of you uh, a week on Friday for the start of the course. Okay, thank you very much.